Good morning and uh, welcome to session 1A. Uh, this session will have four presenters with the goal of addressing visualization's role in transportation system performance measurement and communication and planning applications. I'm Chris Allen. I'm with the Federal Highway Administration in the Office of Highway Policy Information. Uh, you may know us from HPMS data, Highway Performance Monitoring System data. That's our, one of our largest roles. Uh, here today also is Justin Clark. His day job is coaching uh, 10 or so states and getting their data correct, submitted, collected, and all of that, helping them get their data in on time. Justin also has an extra job. Uh, he's, he's FHWA's Data Visualization Manager for Infographics. Justin, say hi. Thank you. Uh, and including an activity that's called Wild Wednesdays, which is an every week production for a federal agency to turn out something every week. It is no small effort, and Justin leads that effort. Uh, we also have, as Anna mentioned in her lightning talk, a DVC service that Justin manages, and that's High Street Consulting. They have done, I think, uh, is Anna here? I saw Brittany, and I see Samin. Brittany, Samin, Anna with us? No? Okay. Uh, you get a chance to talk to them. Uh, it'd be a good thing for you to do. High Street Consulting has created an appetite in Federal Highway to have infographics uh, improved to help them communicate. Justin is in session 2A uh, after, after this at 125, and Anna and Brittany are in 4D. And up in front of you is one of our visualizations. Uh, Wen Jing Pu, took the, who's up here with Federal Highway also, uh, took the, what do you want to call it, travel time reliability data, the NPMRDS data. National Performance Management Research Data Set. Okay, and analyzed it and created this infographic for us, and it went out on a WOW Wednesday. So this is a fairly intensive effort that Federal Highway put out every Wednesday. And then here's one a little data light. Uh, but this is one that's been very popular. Both of these have been picked up by the national media uh, and used. So then this is a new effort from Federal Highway. Uh, and take an opportunity to go out to Facebook and check us out. Certainly hit like, even if you don't like it, but uh, that will help us. <laughs> Today we have Scott with us. Uh, he has 25 years, excuse me, he's the Vice President of Performance Analytics of ITERIS, I think is how you say it. Uh, he has 25 years of policy and urban planning and software management experience in the public and private sectors. He started his career in the United States Senate where he made the second web page in existence for U.S. Senator William Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> He also worked for 12 years at Navtech Nokia slash here. Uh, Scott, why don't you uh, take it away? They want you to come up here, yes. All right. Well, thank you for inviting me today. Um, I'll, try, I'll try to stick to my 15-minute uh, um, uh, to 20-minute window so Michael doesn't pull out his bullhorn. Um, and uh, what I'm going to talk about today is an interactive dashboard that we're uh, implementing for the state of California uh, for MAP21 system performance measurements for the P3 rule. Um, um, I'll go through a little bit about um, uh, what big data is uh, for folks. Uh, I think this is probably a fairly educated audience, but just to cover that briefly, uh, defining what congestion and reliability mean, um, and then going into what uh, we're doing with in terms of visualizations for the, for the MAP21 measures. Uh, so ITERIS is a company where uh, our tagline is innovating through informatics, and so we're uh, both a transportation company and, an, and a weather agriculture company. Um, so I won't talk about the weather agriculture side today, but we, uh, we essentially have a, a, a teams of data scientists that, um, that uh, in our, in our uh, practice that, uh, that apply uh, data sciences to uh, problems that, uh, for reliability for roads and problems uh, for uh, weather and agriculture. So if you're interested in the, uh, knowing when to put a particular chemical down on a, a piece of soil, we could come, you could come to the agriculture version of this talk. Um, so uh, what is big data in, in, uh, in generic terms? Um, it's a series of uh, points that then turn into, uh, that have attributes associated with them. Uh, they again get aggregated together, processed into, um, into linear or spatial references, uh, and then uh, aggregated to produce values that you can then analyze. Uh, what we're doing in this uh, work with Caltrans and in, in, in our uh, analytics tools in general uh, is by aggregating the big data into measures and metrics through an interactive dashboard, uh, we both support uh, more traditional measures and the measures that are required through the P P P3 rulemaking process uh, so that users can both report nationally and analyze locally. 
So to do this, uh, you, you need to tell a story. And so these are um, not the MAP21 measures, but more traditional uh, performance measures that uh, states and agencies have been doing for a very long time. Uh, two of those are, um, uh, the, there are three of them represented here in this graph, um, the mean, uh, the buffer, buffer index and the planning time index, where the planning time index represents the 95th percentile travel time or the uh, one of the worst case travel times that you might have. Uh, the mean is sort of your typical travel and the buffer is the uh, spread in between the worst and one of the worst and the, uh, the, the median. Uh, so what that looks like in terms of, um, so that happens over a series of days and you wanna measure the reliability and that's essentially what the performance measurements are, are asking you to do in the system performance uh, tools. Uh, in um, kind of a standard measure, you could look at that in terms of what, uh, a block of time or what a travel time looks in one time, or you could look at reliability and what that looks like in a probability uh, density function of travel times over time. Um, and then you want to look at some specific uh, proportion of that measure of, you know, you, do you want to look at the worst case, do you want to look at the middle, do you want to look at somewhere in between. And some of the system performance measures uh, look at things like the 80th percentile um, uh, to, to do things, uh, do, do measures that are called the level of travel time reliability, and I'll go into that a little bit um, in my next slides. Essentially, what you're trying to do is over a large space, uh, visualizing congestion and delay. And this is uh, sort of along, uh, along a line, um, how that looks, um, where traffic backs up, there's a slowing down, there's a creation of a queue, you're creating some sort of threshold that you're defining as to what's, um, what becomes congestion or unreliable um, measures. And then there's a cause of that that happens um, uh, uh, at, the, at the front of this queue, and then you're then aggregating that up over, over time and space to produce, a, um, in some cases, a singular number that produces a, a measure that you're then uh, trying to target against. Um, so underneath the surface, that this section below the threshold becomes the delay um, or, or the, um, the unreliable tra uh, traffic that you're trying to, to analyze. You can look at that in different ways, and so this is instead of looking at down the line, looking over top uh, and down the road from the bottom to the top. And then you can see in this case, this is a, this is a contour plot for a heat, heat map uh, where you see the bottleneck cause and the slowing, and I'm representing the same graphic that I showed before uh, as, a, as a spatially flat going down the road measure where you're seeing the back of the queue here uh, and the return to free flow here at the, at the, the side. So what the system performance uh, P3 rule uh, tells, you, tells you to do, there's, there are several different sections that are in the, um, the requirements. Uh, there are um, different uh, performance measures of travel time reliability, uh, truck travel time reliability, um, annual hours of uh, peak hours of success, excessive delay. And then there are metrics that you then calculate for uh, each of those uh, performance measures. Um, in those measures, there are different, uh, the Federal Highway has acquired a data set, uh, which you heard uh, earlier, um, described as the NPM RDS data set, so National Performance Research data set, uh, which has different uh, characteristics, and then the uh, rules prescribe how that's, how that's supposed to be measured, how it's supposed to be rolled up, and what you can and can't, can't do with that to produce your measures at the, at the end. So one of the metrics uh, is the level of travel time reliability. Uh, that's the, um, you do some calculations and you wind up with the 80th percentile uh, over the 50th percentile and you look at different uh, times of day and then you try to figure out which of those times of day um, are um, um, above 1.5 and then if you have a section that's, one, that's above 1.5 then that's considered to be unreliable even if it's only one portion of that uh, time period. And so you then sort of take all that base data that you have over every, every location and you aggregate that up to produce um, the, the measures themselves. There are a couple of different versions of the NPMRDS data set. There was one that was originally provided by, uh, by, by uh, here uh, to Federal Highway from 2012 to, um, uh, to, um, to the beginning of 2017. Uh, and then there's a second data set that uh, Michael's managing for, uh, that's being provided by INRIX through the CAT lab with some tools and some data sets of data accessibility for, for that data set itself. Um, so I'm going to show an example of sort of how that looked like. This is an example from the version one uh, where there's a location reference, a date, um, time period, um, information about the, the, the car traffic, the truck traffic, um, and the uh, data values associated with that. Um, not the data um, in the different data sets is slightly different. So the original data set had, um, had um, uh, gaps in it, and the current data set has 
um, um, places where that uh, referenced as nulls. Um, and so uh, in some performance measures, you'd like to impute uh, data, and other measures, imputation is not desirable. In our dashboard Im implementation for California, where you have the ability to do both, uh, so the MAP21 P3 measures uh, require you not to do imputation, uh, and the uh, tr more traditional measure is that if you want to do that, um, and uh, Caltrans has a lot of work where they do we, we do imputation for them, uh, so we have uh, ways to do the imputation on the same types of data sets to fill in the gaps um, such that they could analyze data over larger space. Um, to then distill that data that you've done a lot of processing on underneath and up into a form that you can visualize, this is where the sort of the fun um, elements go, and I, I um, uh, having watched the presentation from this morning, I hope that we've hit some some of the met, some of the uh, of the uh, not too many colors, but just enough colors. Uh, maybe I have too many. I'm, think, I'm thinking of my redesign now that I've watched the presentation. I'm going to go read the book on the train on the way back to Philadelphia. Um, but uh, so we have more traditional measures, which you see on the left hand side, and then the MAP21 measures that you see on the right hand side. Um, and so we've uh, implemented those into, da into a dashboard concept where we're trying to allow analysts to see the data sets um, at one sort of one click. And then when you select uh, these different uh, locations, so I've selected February in this case, uh, it then changes all the cards on the right hand side, tells you uh, from month to month or, and year to year comparisons whether you're improving or not improving. Uh, have, we have these uh, charts above, um, uh, one which represents the prior year, and one which represents the current year. Uh, and then you can do some selections down here um, in terms of uh, whether you're looking at an area or you're looking at a link, uh, and whether you want to look at particular days of the week or particular times of the day, and you can move these uh, sliders around and, and play and analyze with the data. So we're trying to do both um, a very macro level uh, anal analysis um, so that you can see what does this area look like. You could, in this case, I've selected a county in, in California. Uh, you can go to a statewide level. You can drill down to an MPO. Uh, you can look, and the numbers all change for the for the measures depending on what you've selected for them. We're using color as context. So in this case, I've selected congested percentage, um, which is a an, our, and for the more traditional measures is uh, below 75% of the free flow speed, um, and the. Um, uh, and so we're then applying that red coloring throughout the, uh, the visualization to then say, I'm on the congested percentage. When you switch to the blue uh, measure, it switches to, which switches to speed. And so it tells you something about what you're looking at so that you know that you're, you're on that particular uh, section. Um, the, um, uh, we try to uh, uh, provide uh, text uh, cues on the different part portions of, of the data set so that you can tell what you, what you're doing and where you are uh, and then guide you through the the process the process that you're looking at as well as boundaries to show you the area that you're that you're covering um, from there you can drill into these maps there's a uh, charts and and tables and and maps that you can you can zoom around in and switch your um, your information to, to see better. You can drill down into the uh, map itself and see some more detail for them. You can click on the little on the on the different uh, links and see detail about the link and how, how reliable or unreliable it is. Uh, and then you can in the graphs you we try to keep the same sort of color context. So we're in this this uh, you know the red shading up uh, the red coloring for the congestion percentage also falls into the red shading behind the lines. So we're trying to carry those themes through to, to provide users with tools to, uh, to visualize and analyze data in, in, uh, in easier ways. For MAP21, it's a slightly different process. So there's, uh, we're not in, underneath the surface, we're not imputing. Uh, we decided to, uh, I think, having watched the presentation this morning, I'm happier with the little lines that we have at the top than the, perhaps the shaded line underneath. Um, where uh, we're using lines to represent trends. Um, so I'm, I'm patting myself on the back for that version. Um, uh, we're keeping the color schemes uh, similar to, so that you can switch from one, uh, one element uh, that uses a more traditional measures that states might be used to using to the measures that they're required to, to, to report to, to Federal Highway. Um, and then uh, we're using these cards here on the right-hand side, like what we did in the other, um, uh, to, to do the trending for, uh, for a month and year, and to show what the outcome measure is going to be that they have to report back up to, uh, to, to Federal Highway. 
Um, from these uh, sort of menus down here, we're keeping the same type of design, the, um, uh, doing the different layers where you could select the different um, uh, metrics and that, you're, that you want to select, and then to select the time period, and that will then allow you to see for a particular map or for a particular location uh, where your unreliable uh, data is, and, and uh, so that you can then figure out what you might want to, to do about it. Um, and I think I've hit about the 15 minute mark. Okay. Thanks.